Hey, what's going on everybody? I thought I would do a quick video on how to create and buy your own CCNA lab. So the first thing that a lot of people don't typically think about is what your actual journey is going to be with Cisco. And they may, that may seem a little bit unreasonable to think about, but for some people who have been in IT for some time, you may know whether you want to simply go into your CCNA routing and switching and stop. Um, but you may also be curious about going into other things like wireless or collaboration, whether you want to move into security or rather are you going to do things like CCMP or CCIE level material in the future. All of those things are really important in deciding what lab that you're going to buy for your CCENT and ultimately your CCNA lab. So I thought I'd go ahead and go through a couple of examples of places where you can actually go and buy that equipment and how to actually judge them. So I'm here on ebay.com and when you type in Cisco CCNA lab, usually what you're going to find are bundles. So you're going to find bundles that have been set up by people and actually th these are actually quite nice. Um, because you buy them as a pack and you pretty much get it all shipped together. Um, so let's look at this one for instance. It's a Cisco Premium one year warranty for your NA and your NP. Claims to be fully tested so let's take a look at that. So the first thing that you normally want to look at uh, when you're buying off of eBay is to look at the seller and to see how much they have sold. Apparently they've sold quite a bit of these bundles and what their feedback is. So usually when you find these top rated sellers, they're going to have really, really high feedback. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, 2% or even I would say 6% uh, negative feedback. Uh, as long as they're above, like I would say 95% or so, you should be all right for the most part. Most of the time, these smaller things are for small claims or for people that just simply didn't know what they were ordering. So keep that in mind. So let's see what this is. Um, this is, of course, refurbished gear. Uh, according to this, is all tested and been uh, has a warranty for one year. It seems like you can get a one-year warranty, but it only qualifies if you purchase it for, with a square trade. But in any case, let's figure out what's in this bundle. It looks like there's two switches, uh, which in my opinion is actually kind of low for what you want for a CCNA, certainly for a CCNP. Looks like we have some 1850s, uh, I'm sorry, 1841s uh, routers <coughs> and 2950s. So my understanding, um, well, before I get into that, I would always recommend for you to scroll down and actually read the details. So here's the details of the shipping, the routers, and so actually here, um, notice there's actually two types of routers that you're going to get. You're going to get two 2610 XM routers uh, that are running the 12.4 version of code and then you're going to have one 1841 with a 15.1 version of code. Uh, so that's kind of the, the differences between these two. The amount of RAM and memory is pretty much the same. But I believe that in the new CCNAs, you do want to have 15.1. You could probably get away with 12.4 if I'm not mistaken. But definitely three routers is good enough for a CCNA. But if you're looking into experimenting with the CCNP in the future, you would probably need closer to five routers. Or you may want to consider an alternative type of study method. When you're starting off with IT, and let's just say you've never worked with a Cisco router before networking in, in general, you do want to have a physical lab, even if, it, even if it's just for the CCNA level um, to begin with. You do want to be able to have that lab to one to motivate yourself right 
it's kind of different when you have a button to, to run some kind of emulator rather than having the gear sitting next to you. Um, being able to see link lights and things like that flashing sometimes gives you that motivation to keep going. And also just being familiar with the equipment itself, it's, it's very important. So then two switches, it looks like it's just 2950 layer two switches with 12.1. Now, here it doesn't say that it's power over Ethernet, so I'm going to assume there is no power over Ethernet. Now, and of course, in CCNA writing and switching, there is no really need for power over Ethernet, but if you're looking in the future at you know things like um, collaboration or wireless, power over Ethernet switches would be beneficial, right? So to power up your APs, to power up your your phones and and collaboration endpoints so you know once you start really looking as they say the devil's in the details as you start looking at these labs you're gonna start to see that there are flaws in many of these um, another thing about the 2950s is they don't do layer 3 and now layer 3 is very prevalent in in the CCNA on uh, for layer 3 switching so you're definitely going to want to look at a Cisco 3K, so like a, a 3550 or a 3560, definitely in this rack. So a lot of these, as you can see, 2950, um, some of these are claiming that they're CCIE tested. If I were you, I would completely disregard that. Um, CCIEs have a much better have much better things to do than to be testing out eBay gear, right? So let's see if I can actually find one that I would that I would maybe recommend. Let's see this one here. Okay, let's uh, let's scroll down. This one's kind of nice because it uh, it seems like it yeah it comes with the cables, which is pretty cool. A bonus DVD and the 12U desktop rack. Now I'm, I'm not sure what this bonus DVD is. It's probably some kind of pirated training, if I had to guess. But uh, I would be very careful with those kind of things. So here, uh, three routers, which is, you know, 2911s with 15.1. So this looks a lot more promising. Um, these 2811s are all run 15T code. Uh, it doesn't say here exactly what version of code is running. Now that's another thing to keep in mind, but in most cases, having three routers of any kind is probably going to be good enough, um, at least at this point. So there's, let me see if I can gather anything from, yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to gather anything from there. Now it gives you information here on the amount of flash that's available. So you might want to keep that in mind. Certain images require a larger amount of flash. So, but in general, I think this would be okay. If you're looking at the switching portion, now here we have a 3550 that's uh, S, which is IP base or IP services. Um, I believe S is IP base. Uh, layer 3, but it's loaded with an, an E image, so for IP services. So this particular 3550 had enough memory, or I'm sorry, enough flash in order to hold the IP services image. So this would allow it to do, um, I believe this would allow it to do layer 3 switching, uh, or it definitely will do layer 3 switching. Now the other two switches here are 2950s, uh, only layer 2. So you're not going to be able to do any layer 3 switch connected to another layer 3 switch. So that's something you have to keep in mind, but probably for a CCNA level person, this is going to be just fine. But what you would need to also consider once again is if you're going to be moving toward a CCNP, you know, well, this probably wouldn't be the best lab for you. You would want to have something with probably five routers and and four switches at the very least, and probably all of them being uh, 3550 with layer three capabilities. Uh, and also, again, if you're gonna be needing PoE at a later point in time, I would go ahead and bite the bullet now. 
But these are some of the, the little kits that come together and uh, they're not always the best way to buy. I mean, I think they're very convenient, but you can usually find a better deal by shopping for some of these things uh, on your own. So let's, for example, um, let's go ahead and look up a Cisco 1841. 1841 router. And so you can find a couple of them here. Like this one here is, so it's a good buyer, uh, a good seller, I should say. $64 in free shipping, 15.1 advanced enterprise services. So you pretty much get everything on there. It looks like this would probably be really good. It has two images here, the M version and the T version. So buying a couple of these, maybe five of these would be, like for instance, if, if we were just making one just like the other page, we'd buy three of these. That would be maybe a hundred and, you know, hundred and thirty dollars for these three, right? And now if you were doing a Cisco 3550 switch, uh, with an with EMI image, uh, so this one here. Right now, these are selling for another sixty-seven. So there you go, uh, EMI image for seventy bucks. So you would maybe buy four of these. You know, it starts to get a little bit more expensive, but you're actually getting what you need. Uh, another alternative would be maybe a Cisco 3560 switch. These are also very inexpensive. Um, you can go with the Dash S or the Dash E model in this case. You can typically do more with the Dash E. But a lot of these Dash S's are very inexpensive and sometimes a way to go if you're looking to save a couple bucks but still be able to do like 90% or 95% of what you need to do. So you can probably find better deals, um, especially if you're wanting to do physical uh, routers and switches on your CCMP level, you know, you may want to look into that. Also notice that these are power over ethernet, so you, you'll be able to support PoE. So that's always really nice. 48 port switches, may not be necessary. I mean, you're probably going to want to stick with um, maybe even something like this at 3560 with 24 ports of PoE. This one is, is even cheaper. So this is actually a pretty sweet deal right here. So that's sort of the, the idea when you're shopping on eBay. Again, I would highly recommend doing physical switches if you can. I would almost completely go against doing anything virtual at a CCNA level. Uh, and again, just keep in mind that what you're going to end up doing in the future, if you're going to move into other tracks, try to keep that in mind when you're buying. Uh, another alternative that I also hear about a lot is GNS3. And I think the main reason I hear a lot about GNS3 is because it's free, right? Now, a lot of the images are not supposed to be free, but you're able to find a lot of them out there on the internet, and most people are usually able to um, to find them out there pretty easily. Um, there's also a lot of websites that have pre-configured GNS3 labs, and I've had I've generally had good experience with GNS3, and I heard it has gotten much much better uh, over the years. So I would completely recommend it. At this point, uh, if you're going for your CCNP, just keep in mind that from a layer two perspective, you're not really going to get too far with GNS3. Um, at least the last time that I messed with it, you know, layer two was still kind of finicky. And G GNS3 in general is also just a little bit bucky. You know, at least last time I used it, I've been kind of, I've kind of given up on GNS3 and have moved more towards physical routing and physical switching. Uh, but another great alternative is viral. Now, if I was a CCNP today, I would definitely be 
on the viral train. Um, you can get a subscription for a 20 node license. So now viral can run in a virtual environment. So it could be like your VMware workstation or your ESXi ser server if you have one. And you can run 20 nodes. So you're just gonna need a beefier computer, maybe 16, maybe even 32 gigs of, of memory uh, to run all 20 nodes. But usually for a CCMP level, you can get away with running 10 nodes or so. Um, so 16 gigs will probably be just fine. Now you purchase a subscription for 200 bucks a year most of the time you can get a CCMP done in a, in a year. So this will be great for anybody looking at the CCMP. Um, here are the hardware re requirements. Now some of the features here you have, well, the neat thing about this is that you get the actual images of the iOS that are running in this virtual environment. You have a GUI, very similar to GNS3, uh, it's a little, finicky it takes a little while to get used to but there's an a layer 3 version of the devices there's a layer 2 version for for layer 2 for switching and then you also get like a, the ASA Nexus uh, a lot of these things and, and it goes through a list here of some of the um, technologies that are covered in the various type of um, deployments so as you can see here Nexus um, some of the like fax or uh, OTV things like that are, are not supported here so but Lisp is and that's almost the only thing that I see here that's specifically data center but in any case viral is a great choice and um, I don't like the interface very much but it works pretty stable and you can totally get used to the interface for the price of 200 bucks if you're going for a CCNP and uh, you have networking experience and you've seen, you know, you know what a router looks like, you know how the intricacies of how the line cards work and things of that sort, then go ahead and go for, you know, for, for viral. I would highly recommend it. So the last thing that I'll leave you with is now for those of you going after the CCIE. Now I have not tried doing CCIE with viral although I have seen uh, people do it I think most people are still focusing on the recommended version uh, the recommended design by internet work expert which is the CSR 1000 V running on an ESXi instance or an ESXi host as well as four physical um, layer 3 switches so 3560s which are very very cheap now uh, it's even more so now than than when I bought them myself and then you get yourself a server that can run 20 instances of CSR 1000 V and you're golden and that method worked out really well for me when I was doing my CCIE and uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world because the way I was able to uh, move the configurations and copy and replace uh, the interface numbers were all the same as the lab books that I was using so it worked out well for me and uh, didn't have to really think about it too much but hey guys I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this video and found it informative if you did be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this until next time we'll talk later